I'm about to practice golf every day for 30 days to find out how much I can drop my current handicap of 19.6. My current best score has been 83, however more recently it's been 92 to 98. My handicap has dropped a whopping... Here's the plan. Step number one, get some form of professional advice. For this, I decided to try out Swing Tweaks, not sponsored, and I got paired with John, a PGA professional from Chicago. Step two, practice every day. It's gonna be at the range, in the garden, at the short game, and on the course. Step three, play rounds of golf to lower my handicap. Seems simple enough. Let's head across to John to see what he said about the swing to start with. I like the setup, the width is good. Your grip looks okay. I don't think it's it's a, a problem at all. Oh, thanks John, nice to work on that. Back of your left palm facing down towards the ground too much. Right wrist should oh, bend yeah, so back. A couple of things. John. That club should start hinging back a little bit more. Club gets extremely closed. And your wrists are actually working a little bit uh, incorrectly. And so that's what makes it so hard for you to hit um, any kind of driver, long iron. Uh, he has a point here. This is when I knew John was the man for the job. That's in the water as well, isn't it? <laughs> it's actually quite sad now, isn't it? From this angle, it looks like the turn's pretty good. Yeah, so yeah not all too with bad. With your hips wait, and wait. shoulders. But John, I just see that uh, Give me a break, lad. Come on. That wrist and hands causing so much of the the problem. Fair. Lots of work to do then, John. Let's get to it. And as you can tell, this is my first ever swing change, and it did not go as smoothly as I was intending. Shank after shank after shank. Oh, was that something on my club there, John? Oh, that must have been the issue of just get rid of that and then... Ah. Oh. Well, at least it wasn't the shank. That's uh, end of day one. Day two sees us at the range once more, trying this drill that John gave us. Actually looked at the drills the night before and uh, came to the range with a plan. Excited to see how this one goes. Oh, day three, started off in the garden. We'll get some early swings in before work. Just thought I'd uh, compare myself to Grant Horvat. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's what I did. So after taking the inspiration from Grant, I headed to the range. And you proud of that one, John? Right down the middle. And it felt like we could hit balls again. Nah, I actually missed, but it was a good shot. Alright, day four of practicing golf every day. I forgot my golf shoes, so now I'm wearing Crocs in the short game area. Anyone that's watched me before knows my short game is one of my stronger parts of my game. It's the tee shots we really struggle with. But I've never really practiced a bump and run at all, so I wanted to really get that dialed in. As statistically, it is the safer shot. And unfortunately, the more I play golf, the more I realize that you're only as good as your bad shots. So it doesn't matter if you have two good chips. If you have one bad one, it's going to cost you more. So hence the bump and run practice. And to be honest, the grouping was actually pretty solid on both parts. And the bump and run certainly provided a more consistent role. Whilst I was in the short game, I thought it was key to get some wedge play on the go. Bringing the drill from the range to the course. And as you can see, really trying to point that toe up into the air. Don't want it to be closed, as John calls it. Right, so as you can see here on the slow-mo, I start to open the face, but then just there, it closes again, and that's the issue that we've got. But, we did hit that one pretty pure and found the green, so can't really complain. Just as I was about to think Crocs were the go-to, this happened. So let that be a warning to all of you swing changers out there. It can hurt. And that was the end of day four. Alright, day five we managed to go to the pitch and putts. So nine holes, little par three. Hit that one long, but then a nice little recovery chip. And we see a nice putt, which drops in for the first part. And you can kind of see the wind on the flag there. Just give you a little snippet of the wind before I mute it. So short game practice seems to have worked. Oh, there's the first club drop. But again, nice little recovery chip onto this questionable new green. <laughs> Temporary is an understatement on that one. Oh, and there's the second club drop. See, then I got to this hole, got onto the green. And then I ended up free putting from there, which was actually for double. We'll just pretend I left this one short to practice the bump and run from yesterday. And as you can see, what a result that was. So I just tapped this one. Oh. Do you reckon anyone saw that? <laughs> and I can't help but feel a little bit robbed on this one. I mean, what is going on there? But we did manage to clean that one up for a bogey. And then onto hole 9, actual par 3 distance hole. And I pushed it off to the left. Again, another opportunity for the bump and run. And as you can see, that one's rolling very nicely towards the pin. 
nice. that practice paying off. And I think we know where I need to practice oh, next. No, uh, no, onto the putting yeah. practice, I think. And that's why you never want to start too strong. Anyway, day six, we're actually out on course. But I just gave up because the wind was absolutely mental. Like, literally a four club wind. This is a 294 yeah, meter par Hold four. It. And I've smoked that with yeah. the five wood. Hold we should have left me about it. 90 meters in. However, ended up with about 120 meters. So oh. I took the nine iron and pushed that one off to the right. And then, no excuses here really. I tried to get too cute of it and land it at the top of that hill, then roll down. Got stuck, ended up having to do another chip down. Which was actually pretty decent, good pace. However, the bank was actually ridiculous from where I was. And ended up missing the putt once more. Finishing on a double. So first round out the way, ended up on 97. Actually came down to 96 because of the nine. I mean, the course was actually in great condition. Here's a few more pictures. However, the wind was just absolutely mental. So all things considered, not too bad of a score. So looking at those last two shots, as you can see, I'm still closing the face on the takeaway. So still got to work on that. I really thought I had it nailed on that round. So the next couple of days were spent in the range, trying to work the driver into the bag. I managed to hit a pretty good shot here. On the odd occasion, I can hit a fairly solid drive. However, not quite bag ready. On the next evening, we played some virtual golf at St. Andrews. Didn't have the greatest of rounds to score. Normally put out a better performance than that, can't lie. Last ball of the session, decided to do drive of the deck and it actually worked. Day 9 to 10, we were back working on our swing change at the range and thought it was time to get my carry distance and total distances in. And yep, took a little bit longer due to the swing change and having to get rid of the rogue balls. But we got there in the end and we identified a couple of problems. The main one being the gap between my 52 and pitching wedge. And I found out my pitching wedge is 43 degree. So we are now on the hunt for a 48 degree to plug the gap. On to round two of the challenge at my home course in Wellswood. Here's a couple of shots from the round. And as you can see, I actually ended up scoring the best nine of my life. Very high fairways and greens and reg on that one. Unfortunately, all things do come to an end. And as you can see on the back nine, I lost the plot <laughs> and uh, missed every fairway. <laughs> the final bit of salt in the wound was the back-to-back -back three putts on hole 17 and 18. We did come in with a very tidy 84, one of my best scores to date. And upon review of the footage on one of my best shots of the day, as you can see my practice swing on the left, I've got the toe facing up, but on the actual swing, I've closed the face once more. And just the general swing plane is way better on the practice swing, but it did go onto the green from 180 meters. So at least the outcome was solid. So later that night, I went to the range to try and work on that backswing and also get the five wood going more central rather than hooking off to the left. Also at the range, I helped my mate try and figure out how to hit the ball first instead of the ground. Uh, so we put the shirt down among other obstacles and he finally got some slightly better results. Uh, for the casual golfer, I think this is a great drill. Day 12, we had add stag do round, so it was pair Ambrose. And I actually set up a live leaderboard through playthrough. I was paired with Matt, who's like a 28 handicap, and we needed his drive on the last oh, hole. Yes! And he delivered. So happy for the lad. The team we were with ended up in the bunker, and meanwhile, I landed on the green. We ended up two putting for par. However, it was too little too late, and this putt was for oh, the get win. In, get in. And Dan oh. sunk it in. What a putt that was. Slightly questionable bandit rating from his partner, but we won't talk about that. And these were the final scores. We finished joint third. My tee shots were a little bit off, but I did get a solo birdie, and I did an outrageous recovery on 17 to give us a chance. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough in the end. Day 13. And after scouting Facebook Marketplace, I picked up this 48 degree wedge and we took it straight out to the course. And unfortunately, it was a debut to forget. Didn't actually record many. It was the slowest round I've played in ages. It was about six hours. As you can see, zero greens in regulation and not a single par on the front nine. Finally, managed to sneak a couple of pars on hole 13 and 14, but it's another 96 on the books. The one positive take from the round is putting was actually under two for the whole round. Just everything else was an absolute shambles. Day 14, we were back on the course and we ran into the same problem on the backswing being a lot better on the practice swing than the actual swing but I've started to identify when I'm doing that so I guess we can count that as a little bit of progress. Brought the driver out for the last few holes and I thought that ball was actually at the front of my stance however it's horrifically in the middle and that did not go well at all. I was kind of hoping playing four days in a row was gonna just get the swing going on the course. Turned out not to be the case. Next couple of days I decided to go for a new tactic and tried to copy Toombs' swing. As you can see here on the background I had it up and I was trying to just get into the right positions and I don't think you can tell the difference. No, obviously joking, but uh, this actually did help me somewhat, I think. Which leads us on to day 18. Right, I think I may have figured something out, so I rushed to the range. 
because I was practicing in the garden and I figured something out on my backswing. Is today going to be the day when I can finally figure it out? Let's find out. So on the left, I've put the position that I was in on day one when I sent my swing change in, toe facing downwards. And then on the right, this is the first swing since figuring something out in the garden. And as you can see, that toe is facing up. And again. And again. And again. Oh, well, not always going to have the right outcome, but toe is facing up. And again. And then we even managed to finish the session off with a drive right down the middle. It's taken 18 days, but we're finally making some progress. Determined to get the swing change down, I was even in the garden in my slippers at night. And then we managed to get to the range the next day where we were working on the backswing again and more importantly trying to get this five wood dialed and I was starting to hit it straight as we're heading down south to hit up some new courses. Day 22 and I thought it was about time to practice some short game once more and I was recording another video that's this one just here if you guys want to go check that one out you can it's now live. We were also testing out Bryson's sand drill where you go down the line taking swings and finding out where you ground out the club. I actually found out that my miss tends to be too far after the line so that's something I can look into going forwards. Day 23, I managed to sneak in one more round of a pookie before going south. Semi-casual round, started scoring the back nine. Started off strong with two fairways in regulation, two greens in regulation. Nearly made that putt for birdie. The practice on the five wood the other day really paid off. Got 71% fairways in regulation. But unfortunately, it was the short game's turn to let me down. Next couple of days, we headed down south and towards a new course at Ohope. And again, look at this course. Absolutely stunning views. Crazy to think that this is 7 a.m. in the winter. Well, let's try and break 100 today, I think, is the goal. How the game is trending. Won't give away too much on this round, as I have a full Ooh. video on this course. Definitely deserved it. Missed off to the right there, but I did an outrageous 60 degree to get up onto the green here. Absolutely nailed it. And again, just show off the view whilst we're here. Bloody hell. And then we managed to actually sink this putt in for a lovely par. Oh, what a putt. And just like the other rounds in this video, Oh, fucking hell. The five wood goes to shambles. That is, that's the most rage I've experienced in a while there. I've, I've rarely raged, but fuck me, that was... <laughs> that one cut deep. Right, so for context, what I'm trying to do is on the backswing, I'm trying to bring it up there and then like that. Because my normal swing is like this and like that, and then I come there. Despite talking through the process, I managed to close the face, but I did pure the shot. We'll leave the rest of the shots for the other video, and we'll move on to the next day. It was a bright and early start for us. We took the dog out for the walk, so Sokol joined us, and he was my caddy for the day. Not only was he well behaved, but my shots seemed to be doing the same, and it turned into be a lovely day at the end. Some nice shots and some nice views to finish. The last couple of days before the final round was just some practice in the garden. Didn't want to overdo it, just wanted to make sure I was fresh for the final day. Today is the day, day 30. We're gonna get after it. I'm feeling good. We've had some ups and downs along the way, um, but hopefully we can pull it all together in one final round to see if we can make a big difference in the handicap and hopefully maybe get our best score. I don't know, it's golf though. <laughs> it could quite easily be 100. I'm gonna play smart today and hopefully we've finally locked in that swing. Um, but yeah, that's what we're gonna focus on, the backswing, slowing it down, everything that was working for me on the last outing. All right, we're here. It's 2.5 degrees centigrade. Uh, course was closed a little bit longer uh, due to the ice. So here we go, final round. Part five to start. Popped it off to the left of the tee shot, but recovered the seven iron. Pitching wedge just short, and here you can see the frost. Just want a simple up and down from here. At least get on the green, give us an opportunity. Like that. As you can see, a lot of ice on the club. And is it gonna slow it up? I reckon just a little bit. Gonna take a little bit getting used to. Okay. First time seeing ice on a ball. Swap down to the orange ball. Horrible tee shot with it, but great recovery. And we're gonna get our first par of the round. Then we've got a couple of bogeys. Followed by the worst tee shot of the round, the hook into the tree. Nice recovery with a 9 iron just to get up there. And then a very lovely oh. up and down. I was pretty happy with. Oh, what a putt. Low hook into the tree, into a par. We'll take that. Tried to set up a great camera view for this one to get green and reg. Did not happen. This is what it was supposed to look like though. That would have been nice. But we're back here chipping with the 48 degree. And I played that one pretty nicely off to the left. Oh, what is that? It's so soft. Leaving a little uphill putt. But we make it in for plus four. 
managed to actually find the fairway on the next Ooh. shot and then had this par 3 where I've chipped uphill. This is a hugely downhill green. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh. Unfortunately just missed. Short par 4 now. Oh, what a strike. And I hit my best strike of the round. If we can start hitting the ball like that, we're on to a winner. Well, that was a nice wedge shot onto the green. And we get our first birdie. Yes, yes, yes. It's been ages since I've had a birdie. All the hard work paid off. <laughs> yes. Oh, come on, let's see it out now. Let's see it out. Next hole, we had green and reg. Got the camera view a lot better. Unfortunately, came well short. Nice little chip to get on the front of the screen. It's downhill after that. Didn't roll out. Big putt for par. Come on, drop in, drop in, drop in. <laughs> Got him. That one meant a lot. It's my nemesis hole. Just missed the fairway. It's down the middle. Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, the amount of times I've hooked that tee shot. Anyway, fairway and drag. Oh, there's that hook. Take a moment of silence for some bad decisions here. Oh! Luckily I hooked that, otherwise I think that was in the tree. Oh my god, I nearly hit the gut. I think it was actually a goose, but I think I've got oh, confused phew. my words there and ended up calling it guck. Anyway, back to the hole. Not a great lie there. You know what? If that stays on, we'll take it. Oh, that's got to sit. Wow. So after the birdie and the par, we followed it up with... Fuck! A triple. First free putt, first triple. Oh, that's abysmal, boys. If I've learned anything from golf, it's to put the bad shots behind you. Come round. And think positive. Green and red certainly helped that. And we managed to make it in for par. Six irons really firing now. Keeping it in the fairway. That one is just longer the green. On another day, I'd opt to have chipped that. And this is why you putt. Go on, get there, get there. Oh. See, it's, it's stuff like that, the little things, where it's not about improving your technique so much. It's about just playing so much smarter. <laughs> so back to back pars. And unfortunately, I've duffed that chip, as well as missing long on the original shot. And now I've gone a bit further long, and we ended up doubling on that par three. Not a great tee shot on this one. We had a tricky part, and we managed Sit. to secure the bogey yes. from here. It's actually quite an interesting finish. So hole one, we've got a par three, and then we've got two par fours. But the second one, like hole two officially, is the hardest hole. I always hit the tree from the tee shot, so we're going to try and avoid that. Just get a bogey on that one. And then hole the third hole, which will be my last hole, is actually the hole that I've birdied the most at this course. Um, so let's let's see if we can finish it out strong. Downhill par three. Striped it. Yes, on the green. Oh shit! Fuck! <laughs> no god, no. <laughs> oh wow, that picked up some pace. Still got it, boys. Still got it. The ground is a bit soft, so it somehow bounced backwards on a downhill green. Come in, come in. Come in. Ooh. Gave it a chance. And that's unfortunate. God damn it. Ah. Oh. Oh, I still somehow managed to hit that tree. Of course. Hit a nice seven iron to lay up. It was a little short. Camera died, unfortunately ended with a oh, double. I, don't, I, don't want to check. I know I've got a triple on the scorecard. Couple of doubles. Got some pars, but I got that like birdie. So that should, that should put us in a good score. Whether it's enough to lower the handicap any, I'm not too sure. But hopefully we'll be in the 80s. One last tee shot, which I hooked off to the left. And then the camera died, and we ended up getting a bogey. Not the ending I was after with that start, oh. but that's golf. Man, that's so annoying. 
Right, the scores were entered last night. Let's head across to the website to see how much my handicap has dropped in 30 days of practicing golf. My handicap has dropped a whopping 1.8. So I'm down to a 17.8 handicap. Yeah, I don't really know what I expected from 30 days, uh, especially trying to do a swing change, which was quite significant. Uh, still got a lot of misses that I need to work on, but progress. So, you know, we want to make progress all the time. Sometimes it's going to be smaller than others. Um, but yeah, got uh, two rounds of 84 at my local course at Wellsford. Didn't really deliver at any new courses, um, but we did manage to work on a couple of things. Factoring as well in New Zealand, it's still winter, so our scores are going to be slightly higher. <laughs> That's just what I keep telling myself. I'm going to keep going with this journey. Um, we're going to get another tweak from John, hear back from him, and let's move forward and see if we can get better. So moving forwards, I'm thinking of doing a weekly vlog of my practice showing my improvement and my journey to single digit handicap. So be sure to subscribe for that and I'll catch you next time. Signing off with this little guy.